lots of discussions about the role of the shoe that you're wearing in terms of uh, your mechanics in the squat. Um, I've tried lots of different things uh, over the years of squatting. Yes, I've, I've got the ROM 2s. I'm wearing them again. Uh, they're going to be like my default shoe because I don't have any other better pairs. I've spoken about that a little bit. Winter, cold. I can't wear Vivo bare feet. I don't want to wear them. Cold feet, cold ankles, cold Achilles, cold calves, cold everything. It's not a good way to, uh, to uh, lift when you've got cold extremities. So when you have uh, warm sh- uh, feet or warm shoes uh, and, and you can warm up nicely in them and you can retain that heat, then all of a sudden like you have better mechanics. Uh, but this, this idea of heels being raised and raised and raised to somehow improve your squat mechanics. I think for a lot of people, it does work. For me, uh, I think it changes it a little bit, but still the, 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 the cause behind my movement uh, is not because of the ankle restriction. I think it's a lot of people just revert back to this idea that the ankles are the, the, the source of all evil when it comes to squatting. And then if you had ample dorsiflexion, everything else would get sorted. Uh, what people don't maybe think about is that when you have extreme dorsiflexion, in order for you to access that dorsiflexion, you need to have other things to accompany it. Uh, namely, you need to have really good quad strength. So when you load up a decent amount of weight on the bar, uh, and you start moving that around, your body's going to want to go to the spot where it has the ability to produce force the easiest or where it's the strongest. So even if you have really good ankle dorsiflexion, you do all your passive tests and you're, you're kind of like, yeah, it looks all pretty good, but why does my squat look like that? Well, you need to consider that maybe the body goes into the certain positions because you can't access that dorsiflexion because your quads cannot tolerate that. So with dorsiflexion comes more quad activation. Uh, if you do not have quads as your main move, as, you, as your powerhouse, it's not going to want to go there, man. So this is the case for me. You know, I am a dead lifter. That's, that's where my movement pattern uh, wants to be. And so it's a, it's a spectrum between a deadlift and a front squat. And wherever you fall in between that is where you are. And so in my opinion... Uh, yes, you can put these little band-aids on your feet called, you know, heeled shoes and expect better. Uh, but if you don't have the quads to power that movement, then you're not going to really display that, not with meaningful weight. Sure, you can, you know, uh, put ROM 2s and then put some more elevation underneath your feet and be really, really elevated in your heel. And move the barbell around like perfectly upright, you know, up and down like an elevator. That's fine. But the moment you start to add weight, and so the moment you start to go into the 60, 70, 80, 90% weight, you will see that you will start to deviate away from that optimal up and down. Uh, because whether you like it or not, the, the real strongest muscles in our body are the, the glutes and the, uh, the hamstrings, that, that's that hip extension. This is why most people can deadlift more than squat. Now, in a squatting pattern, um, you know, especially in all the, all the lifting uh, realms, we want to sacrifice some of our squatting ability in favor of being more vertical so you can do the damn sport. But if somebody like me who doesn't really care about that, uh, I want to just lift the most amount of weight, uh, I should just put a low bar and just basically do a deadlift with the bar on my back i don't want to do that for aesthetics reasons so i kind of am kind of like closer to the only world than i am to the powerlifting world uh and so even though i'm wearing these shoes even though i'm like exhibiting you know some of the things that you guys were hoping for like oh yeah here we go elevated heel i think the rom twos have really good elevation in terms of other shoes you still see that the pattern is almost very very if not the same right very similar. And I think that's because there are, you know, weaknesses in the body of mind that continuously get exhibited. Um, I think my quads are weak. I think my hip hinging is strong. Let's, let's not even talk about direct muscles. Let's just say I'm really good at hinging and I'm, 
relatively speaking, I'm weaker at squatting. So squatty movements, not very good. Hingy movements, very good. So now we put this device on my feet, the heeled shoe, which makes it more squatty, which is fine in the warm-ups, but as soon as the weight gets heavy, I become hingy. Uh, so then we could probably say, well, the best thing for you to do is to have the correct loading, maybe work with 50% weight, 40% weight, and keep it in that squatty uh, movement until you become really good at squatty movements. You could do that as well. You can do accessory movements. You can do many other things. But solely relying on shoes, I'm not convinced that, that is the way to go. Now, we can say that in these shoes, I'm more biasing the quads. And so let's say if I give these shoes six months, over time, if you compare the, the you know, wearing off ROM 2s versus the flat shoes, after six months, I should be able to confidently say that I will have better quad strength purely because I'm in a biased device. That, I think that's a fair statement. That, that, that really is a fair statement, but to expect the shoe to just, you know, emancipate you from these shackles of an ugly squat, I think that's, I think, too much of a, of a, of a wish. Uh, to use the shoes as a tool, somebody, somebody else said it in the, in the comments, it's another variation. I like that more to it. But to say that the shoes just fix everything immediately, that hasn't been my experience. Maybe you guys out there you know, have had immediate transformations, but my feeling is if you're not a quaddy guy, you're not going to be a quaddy guy with the shoes either. Um, you're just not. You, you don't have quads. Uh, and so these shoes can help you get a little bit of quads, uh, but it's going to be a slow process and it's going to be very much dependent upon your loading that you pick for your movements. Um, if you're continuously going to 90%, 95%, you're always going to be in a hingy movement. Uh, but if you're going to like 40, 45, 50% and doing bodybuilding sets of 10, 12, 15, okay, all right, then now, now we are not in a crisis state where we have to really chuck it into the freaking top gear and, and, and throw in the glutes and the hamstrings into the mix and the adductors. Now we can stay within the quads and just work the quads. Uh, I think for my for myself, I need more quads. Uh, I think these shoes are very uncomfortable. I don't like being in them, but they are a tool, and that's how I'm thinking about it. I mean, the most important factor is I'm not cold in them. Uh, I know some of you guys are probably rolling your eyes, like, "Come on, man!" Like, yeah, dude, like that's that's the way it is. When when the concrete's cold, my feet get cold. Everything gets stiff. Everything gets crap, and uh, maybe even I'm getting more sick with the freaking with the shitty shoes on. Um, I mean, there's a reason why we don't all walk around bare feet in winter. Um, so that's kind of my motivation behind these shoes. I'm just wearing them because they're warm. Uh, yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, but some of you guys, are, I think, are a little bit surprised that my squad didn't look better in these shoes than in flats. But, you know... Um, I've had these experiences before. I've, I've, I've ran these shoes for a long time and, you know, and uh, I don't know. They are not the fix. Um, they're a tool to buy certain things, but they're not going to transfer you overnight or transform you overnight. At least that's my experience being. All right, guys, appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.